In this example, we're going to keep on practicing our projectile motion with two dimensions. We have a cannon firing a ball from ground level. If the initial speed is 120 meters per second, at what angle should the ball be fired to hit a target 800 meters away? Or if the initial angle is 25 degrees, at what speed should the ball be fired to hit a target 800 meters away? All right, so it's two different sides kind of of the same coin. So let's look at part A. We have a cannon firing the ball from ground level. Now you notice that ground level right there, that's your initial position, which we know as x0, y0. which will be 0, 0. The ground level gives us the y value of 0, and the x is 0 because it always makes sense to put the origin where you're starting. <laughs> so we're going to fire from down here. So there's our initial position. So x0, y0 is 0, 0, right there. And then we're going to shoot the cannonball up in the air. It'll go up, and then it'll go back down. And it'll land over here. All right, then they're telling us that when it fired, it fired with a magnitude of 120 meters per second. So it's firing in this direction, and the magnitude of that vector is 120. Okay, so that means that u0 and v0, I'll just write this down here, u0, v0, which is the initial velocity, would be 120 cosine of whatever angle this is. So cosine of theta, 120 sine of theta. That's our initial velocity. OK, now let's put that together. So we know that position would be u0 t plus x0 and then negative one half g t squared plus v zero t plus y zero. That is the position function. So we know that that would be 120 cosine of theta times t plus x zero, which was zero. So I don't have to write anything. <laughs> I'll just get rid of that little plus sign because I don't need it. All right, now gravity. Uh, we're dealing with meters here, so I'll just make a little note. Gravity must be 9.8 meters per second squared because we're in metric. Okay, so that's negative 1 half times 9.8, which is negative 4.9 t squared plus, and then v0 would be 120 sine of theta times t. And then there is no y0, it's 0, so we're good there. Now there is one more piece of information. So if, if you'll notice, we're looking for the angle, right? So we're looking for theta. That's what we want to find. So I'm not going to be able to just plug in values here. But I do know that the target is 800 meters away. So I know that this distance right here is 800. And so this point over here is 800 comma 0, if I want to write it as a point or a vector. Right. Huh. OK, so let's think about that. Hold on, I just want to kind of segment off my graph. <laughs> There's my assumptions over here on the left. OK, so let's make a note. When x is 800, y is 0 when um, to hit the target, or at the target, I guess I could say. So at the target, x is 800, y is 0. That's over here. OK, so x is 800. So that means that 120 cosine of theta t must be equal to 800. And similarly, negative 4.9 t squared plus 120 sine of theta t would be equal to 0. 
Um, that's two equations and two unknowns. We don't know theta and we don't know t. So we can solve this, right? Now by hand, you would solve this for say t and then substitute it into the other equation. But we have something called maple, right? So we're going to use solve. So in maple, we've, we've actually seen this before. We'll use the solve command and then you'll type your equations. So um, 120 cosine of theta t equals 800 comma da, 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 and we'll fill that out comma and then theta comma t. So let me go type that in so you can see what it looks like. So I'm in here typing it and it just occurred to me, one, I shouldn't have capitalized the s, it is a lowercase s. Two, to get the theta, you can get it a couple ways, but the easiest way is to just use the palette over here. Theta is right there. So you say 120 cosine of theta times t equals 800, comma, negative 4.9 t squared plus 120 sine theta. Make sure you pick the same symbol. Theta times t equals zero. Close your curly braces, comma, theta, comma, t. So it's giving us four answers for this, and you have to know a couple things. One, the negative answers can get thrown out. There's no way you can go back in time before you shot the cannon. So these two that have negative times associated with them, there's no way that that is correct. So you can just toss those out. So then think about the other two. This one has time at 6.95 seconds, which makes sense for a cannonball, and this has 23 seconds, which even if that's a valid answer, it's fine, but it's not going to work for us because it hit the ground first with this one. So this is the one we want. Oh, it's probably too small a font for you to see. So we want the one that has the first time solution that we're interested in, the first positive t solution, which would be this one with the 6.95, not this one, which is, you know, at 23 seconds because it will have already hit the ground at 6.95 seconds. So there we go. So we've got solutions. I'm going to lowercase my s for my solve here. So my solutions are t is 6.95275 seconds, and theta is 0 0.28786. Now keep in mind that's radians, right? It can't help itself. <laughs> Right? It's radians. So we want to convert that to degrees because that's the way we think about or the way um, we deal with angles for trajectories. So I would convert that answer. So I can even copy and paste it, I think. So it's this answer, 0 0.287 and change to degrees. And it's 16.49 degrees or 16.493. <laughs> Sorry, my dog was right next to me. <laughs> okay. So this was the answer to their question. It says, if the initial speed is 120 meters per second, at what angle does it need to be fired? And there it is. There's the angle. So that's part A done. Okay, so let's put a big line in the middle of the paper. And let's do part B. Okay, for part B, we're still firing from ground level, but this time they gave us the initial angle. So we can go like this, firing from ground level, boom. We still know a couple things. We know that this is 800 comma zero over here. You can write it as a vector or as a point, it kind of doesn't really matter. We know that this is zero, zero for our initial position right there. Right, that's your x0, zero, y0, zero, because it's fired from ground level. But this time, when we shoot off this direction, we know the angle is 25 degrees. So what is it we're trying to solve for? Well, we're trying to solve for the speed. In other words, we don't know how 
harder <laughs> how fast it's coming out of that cannon. We don't know the magnitude of this vector, so we're going to call it k. Oh, okay, so that means that our initial velocity, which is u0, v0, is, um, I'm going to write it this way, is k cosine of theta, k sine of theta. And again, gravity is still 9.8, so that's no big deal. We assume that because we're in metric. Okay, so how does this change our setup? So if we think about our position function, r of t, which is u0, right, u0 t plus, keys, plus x0, excuse me, u0 t plus x0, negative one half g t squared plus v zero t plus y zero. All right, so u zero would be k cosine of theta times t plus x zero, which is nothing. We don't have a zero or x zero. Well, we do, but it's zero. And then negative one half times 9.8 is negative 4.9 t squared plus, and then v zero would be k sine of, oh, I'm so sorry. We do know the angle. I got distracted by my dog barking here. This is k cosine of 25 degrees. k sine of 25 degrees. There you go. Sorry. So this is, um, hold on, let me, let me fix this. There we go, I fixed it. All right, so we have our u0 right here with times t and then negative 4.9 t squared plus, there's our v0 times t, and x0, y0 ended up being 0, 0, so it's pointless. Okay, but again, when um, we hit the target, x is 800 and y is 0. So we have yet another equation. So we could say k cosine of 25 degrees times t equals 800, and negative 4.9 t squared plus k sine of 25 degrees times t equals zero. That's two equations and two unknowns, and we are going to use solve in maple. Now, one thing that we want to keep in mind is that when you do something like sine or cosine, it always assumes that you're in radians in maple. So you have to convert your angle from degrees to radians in order to be able to make this work. Okay, so I'm going to label this part part B, and I'm going to label my angle. So I'm just going to say A3, so A for angle, colon equals, oops, I don't know why that's bolded a3 colon equals, and then I'm going to convert my degrees, which is 25 degrees, you have to write the word degrees, to radians. There, now it knows my angle. Wonderful. So now, if I want a decimal approximation, which I probably do, if I put 25.0 degrees, there, now it knows it in decimal form. Okay, so I want to use the solve command, so let me type this up and I'll be right back. Although I will note before I go solve this, one thing you can do is you can grab the old one, so I'm just going to copy and paste, because it has a lot of what I want, and then I'll just modify. So I got rid of the 120, I put K in instead, because we don't know, and I'm using A3 for my angle, because that's the 25 degrees changed to radians, and then I have to go over here and tell it I want it to solve for k and t. All right, again, ignore the negative ones. That's not going to do any good to go back in time before you shot the cannon, so you're going to look right here at the 8.7 for your time. Oh, sorry, these are small font. All right, so 8.7 seconds for your font, or for your time, so k is 101.165. And I'm going to tell you right now that that's a lot easier to do in maple <laughs> than it is to do by hand. It's a real non-fun problem to do it by hand. 
Oops, I had to go back to Maple to remember my numbers. All right, so 8.7254 seconds is when it hits. So this is when it hits. Not that it asked, but in case it did. And then what is this k that we're finding? Well, the k that we're finding is the magnitude of the initial velocity vector, which is what it was asking for. It wants to know the speed. Right? And that's what we found. Now, speed would be measured in the same units as velocity. In this case, it would be meters per second. And we're done.